I have a cup of tea and I also have this old computer. This is my trusty Toshiba T1000. It's a XT class laptop with, if I can get the lid open, uh, a CGA screen and a XT class processor inside with half a meg of memory. It boots off ROM. The only storage it's got is the floppy drive on the side and it stopped working. So I'm going to take it apart and see if I can figure out what's wrong. This is kind of discouraging because these machines are, have notoriously flaky power supply circuitry. So I'm worried that this has in fact died along with one of my other T1000s. I have two complete ones and a spare motherboard. And in fact, if you go look back at the video history on my channel, you'll see when I assemble this fully working machine, or at least it was fully working then, from assorted parts. So I'm hoping that all that's wrong is that the batteries are a bit fried. Uh, I shouldn't really have kept this with the batteries in it. But the unique power supply on this machine means, uh, means that it will only run from battery. It does have an AC uh, socket, except this is used to charge the battery. If you don't have a battery in it, it won't work. Uh, I'm just trying to find my, here we go, appropriate size of bit for all these screws. That will do. So what I'm going to do primarily is to take the lid off, remove the battery pack, and then try and power it directly from the battery terminals. So that would be fooling the machine into thinking it's running off batteries. So if that works, I know it's the batteries that are at fault. Hmm. Also, I think I didn't put these screws back in in the right place. Some of them are clearly longer than others. Okay, that should be all of them, so... It just lifts off and neatly props up like this, exposing the battery pack here, which actually clips in so I can just simply unplug it. Now, do a quick inspection. I don't see any fluffiness. They are perfectly normal NICADs, nothing exciting there. Uh, and you can see if the uh, the battery connector has got two black leads and two red leads, but they're both common together for extra current. So let me measure the battery voltage. That's visible. Uh, 61 millivolts, that seems wrong. Is this battery pack just dead? I wonder if I actually stored this turned on. I don't think I would have. I mean, it's pretty obvious to tell when this machine's turned on or not. But that looks very, very flat. That looks suspiciously flat. That looks like the meter's not working. 
So, I mean, that looks like it's registering absolutely zero. Um, I'm just going to test this. So I'm going to turn my bench power supply on, which is connected up to this thing. This is producing six volts. Yes, this is not reading the correct value. 50 millivolts. I do not think so. That's because I last used it to measure current and this is plugged into the current jack. Right, let's give that another go, shall we? Six volts, dead on. Okay, turn that off again. Now let's try the battery voltage. Right, four volts. Uh, so there are four NICAD batteries at about 1.2 volts each. So a pair is 2.4 volts and four of them is 4.8 volts. The battery is very flat. Okay. So now let's try powering the thing off the battery connector and see if that works any better. Now these are my other T1000. So we have a bare motherboard. Uh, this one is faulty. You can see here I've done some recapping in the hope that it would come back to life, which it didn't. Here underneath you can see where the problems are. This is the computer. You see it's neatly divided into block segments. This horrible horror of a mess is the power supply. This is the charging circuit and all the DC to DC converters that generate all the voltages that the rest of the computer needs. And it's this horrible mass of discrete surface mount components buried under here, one of which will have failed. This always happens in these T1000s. If I knew how, I would actually bypass the power supply completely and just feed the rest of the computer myself. However, this should be a functioning motherboard in my old, rather dirty chassis. This is why I used the uh, in my previous video, I used the nice chassis with the working motherboard. So let's say to open this up. Why do screws go out of fashion? Like so. And we steal the battery connector, which is there. Uh, where is the battery connector? See, the whole reason I opened this up was because I wanted to use the old connector, which I had bodged. Uh, I must have put this back together again last time without actually removing the connector. That was embarrassing. But while it's open, I'm also going to steal the... I think this is the right one. The back plate here, because the other computer doesn't have one. This is the... There's a slot here for a modem. It plugs into these ports. Uh, if you don't have the modem installed, then this plate covers the embarrassing hole. But I'm actually going to move this over to the working computer. Possibly with modifications. Okay. Right, well, obviously the uh, the battery connector, it will be somewhere on my desk. Uh, somewhere. Wow, I've got a lot of stuff on my desk. Well, let's put the screws back in again then. Um, and I'm actually 
You can see from these screws that some of them are longer than others. Now the short screws go here on the keyboard. If you use a long screw instead, then it deforms the plastic. And that's actually happened on the other computer, and you can see a little bulge under the keyboard, which is a shame. So now this goes back and I start looking on my desk for lost things. I can find neither hide nor hair of it. What will have happened is that it will have been tidied into one of my junk drawers and it will show up five years from now. So I think, thinking about this, let me just take this off and show you how it works. This machine, is not realistically going to run off batteries. I mean, it will, but the chance... I'm never actually going to do that. The thing is that the batteries don't really last very long, it's painful to charge, and this machine is only really going to live on a desk. Now oh, that's interesting. You know, that's extremely interesting. That explains why it's not working. Why has that failed? Is there battery corrosion? That's, that wire looks terrible. There's blue at this end of the connector. These wires are corroded down their length. Let me just do a thing. Yes, copper wires are copper coloured. These are green. So have these batteries actually leaked? These aren't much good. There's some hair there. See, this side's okay. That's pretty awful. Anyway, well, okay, this explains why it's not working. So I think my choice now is, do I want to try and reconnect the battery terminals? Yeah, you can see the blue corrosion flaking off onto my fingers. Is this even making electrical contact anymore? No, no that's because these are actually <laughs> not connected. Uh, so I need to stick one end in here. Okay, the wires are grim, but they are actually still conductive. Yep, yeah. I have seen these wires so bad that they are just completely non-conductive anymore. Well, what I was saying is, this machine is only going to run as a historical exhibit and when I want to do things like retro computing, which is actually why I got this out in the first place, discovered it didn't work. So it's only ever going to run on a desk. So I think what I want to do is to modify it so that 
it can be powered directly from the battery terminal. So let me just unsolder these two. If this, I can get enough heat in. And now I'm just going to cut it off. So this way it can be run from a bench power supply, just a simple five volt supply, which is fed straight into the battery connector. The machine thinks it's running off battery. Everything is fine. The 1600 milliamp hour NICADs. Uh, well, these could be fine. Probably worth keeping in case I need NICADs. Anyway, let's strip these. Oh, that's a terrible color. And then I will figure out how to connect it to the bench power supply. Okay, so what we're going to do is I get out some chocolate block, small piece of chocolate block. Let's try this one. I have a proper pair of wire cutters somewhere. Oh, there they are. So that these will be I really don't like the look of these. Uh, I should probably... So re ideally this needs the pins taken out of the connector and uh, new non-corrosive, non-corroded wires going in. But I don't actually have the wherewithal to do that. Let me just remove one of these. This is a little bit fraught because there's a risk of bending the pin. You can't, it won't stay in anymore. If I can make this work. There's a little piece that bends up and stops the pin sliding out. Let's try this end. So I need to pull on the wire while also pushing this down. Then it should just slide out. There we go. That's ah, not so bad. It's a bit green in places. Um, so I think, you know what, I am actually going to go and soak this in some vinegar for 10 minutes. That should deactivate the, well, if it is a uh, battery goop. Uh, oops, what's that? I hope that wasn't important. Looks like a spring of some kind. The pin's not coming out. I need a bent piece of wire.
I need a thicker bent piece of wire. Actually, I can... See, I'm concerned that a uh, piece has fallen out of the, uh, the connector pin and it now won't work anymore. All right. So, here's the battery connector. It's two pairs of terminals. Let's see if the terminals are connected together. They're not. See, I was hoping I'd just be able to plug this on and then check to see that the two pairs of wires were connected, but that won't work. But let me go and get the vinegar. I'll do this bit offline as it's just waiting and get back to you. So here it is soaking in vinegar. Uh, a while back, I actually bought a pot of herb vinegar thinking it was fruit juice. I did get a real shock when I tried to drink out of it. Um, so this is also going to be nice and fragrant. And you can see just there are bubbles coming off the wire tips so yes there is alkaline whatever in this stuff so I'll leave it for 10-15 minutes and then rinse it off in tap water and then come back so here is the rejuvenated connector the green has gone from the connectors here and the wire ends are now brown in places that'll be where the corrosion has been eaten away by the acid revealing brown copper. It's not going to be perfect. There's still going to be corrosion inside the wires, but this will do for now. It really needs a new cable. Uh, so I'm going to have to try and figure out what these are and find one. Okay, so we're just going to connect these up to the chocolate block connector. This is the most plausible reason why it's failed, but as I said, these things are incredibly flaky, so who knows. Okay, seems good and solid. We now need a five volt supply. Um, hey, look what I found in a junk drawer. Does this connector look familiar? I think this is the original connector from the other machine. And I appear to have done a thing. I think that what this is, although I have no memory of this at all, is a five volt mains power supply for one of these machines. This end has a very small 700 milliamp uh, power supply on it. And uh, this is a on off switch. So maybe this works. I will plug it in and give it a try. I'm not entirely keen on it. This is very small and I have a feeling that this thing may draw more than 700 milliamps, but it is worth a try. So let's get everything out and plug it in. Okay, it's plugged in. I've got the voltmeter set up. Let's turn it on and see what happens. This has gone to five volts, which is correct. So we throw the switch in the back of the machine. Power. We have to wait for it to do its memory check. Can I see the screen? It's the screen is over here and is not really visible from this angle. But the fact that that light is green is good. Uh, it's very slow at doing the memory check. Uh, it's not a very fast computer. Fantastic! It booted. Good. 
So it's fine. All that happened was the batteries went flat. Well, fantastic. Um, I think that basically the only thing left to do now is to trail this out the back of the machine. And I'm going to use this to power the thing. When I get a actual socket, what I'm going to do is drill a hole in this, uh, fit it here, and then use my standard center positive connectors from the bench power supply to actually power the thing. So you just plug it in on the back and it works. Uh, Interesting. I think I may have glitched the power when I moved the cable. That's not a very good sign. Anyway, so power off. Uh, yep, you should be safe with that. And I will, let me see, I need three short screws and the rest can be long. Now I do have three short screws. Ah, there's the missing one. That's why I'm confused. Okay, so this goes on here and screws in place. Oh, hang on. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Not with the wire hanging out. I'll have to leave that off for the time being. So in fact, all I need to do now is to drop this on. Do up all the nasty little plastic clips. Which aren't doing up. And now, if I turn the thing on, there, we, there you go. Testing memory. Takes a while. It occurs to me that this is probably the stupidest video I've ever done, given that all I really did was remove the defunct battery pack and then plugged in a power supply that I had prepared earlier. Oh well. And... DOS. Hmm. I think the battery it needs a bit of setting. But yeah, this is DOS on ROM. There's quite a lot of stuff there, actually. Uh, including... Uh, some setup and self-test utilities. Uh, the ROM is socketed, so it would be actually be possible to blow my own with more software on. I need a, you know, a, uh, a bigger EEPROM. Uh, yeah, everything seems to work. It's got a self-test utility, uh, but it's a interactive one. Uh, no, I don't want to test the floppy drive. I don't have a printer. Uh, oh yeah, this this bit is actually testing the, the uh, motherboard and the memory. But yeah, that glitched a bit as I moved the lid. So let's turn the thing off again and do the screws up, and then we'll call it a day. And I'm going to have to try and get some more of those sockets. This is going to be tricky as I'm going to have to try and figure out what they are. There's several different varieties of extremely similar. Extremely similar barrel connectors. Um, see that this is the, this is the one I want. And... This is the one that came with the machine, and they are the same diameter, 
but not this on the outside, but the pin inside is different. The reason why I have that one barrel connector with the wrong size in the junk drawer is because I bought a batch of them a while ago and some of them are wrong, which is irritating. Anyway, I'm glad the machine actually works. I'm writing some DOS software. I've ported my Calgol compiler to MS-DOS and I want a machine to run this on. Um, I have a an IBM XT laptop, an IBM PC convertible it's called, and I have been using that, but it's but it's enormous and this will be way more convenient. Well, oh. one working computer, one elderly and slightly suspect battery pack. I really don't like the look of those cables. Yeah. And a fair amount of incompetence. Oh well. Thank you for watching, assuming anyone still is. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments. Well, I appear to have spoken a little bit too soon because after assembling the thing, I got out the disk I wanted to run on it, which is how I actually discovered it was broken in the first place, powered it on and this happened. This is wrong.